In order to enter a purchase order in PSL Plus, select the purchase order folder found on the left hand side of your screen. Once open, select purchase order entry, PO entry, or select number two from the quick access bar at the top of your screen titled P slash O. Once open, you may add a new purchase order record by selecting the add key at the top of your screen, the blue plus sign, or pressing F4 on your keyboard. Once you have selected to add a new purchase order, you will receive a transaction reference number, as well as an effective date. The effective date may be changed to any date you wish, however, it will default to today's date based on your computer's settings. You then have the description of goods and services that this purchase order is in relation to. Pressing tab, we will be brought to the batch information. Batch information here will list your initials followed by today's date. A batch is a digital file folder containing today's work, worked on within PSL Plus. We then have our production number and company number, which also can be changed if necessary, as well as our currency code. This is also a required field. In vendor information, simply select the vendor in question. This is done with the vendor ID. You may either type in the vendor ID if you know it, or right click in the vendor ID field in order to bring up a pick list of vendors. Once your pick list is up, you may navigate to the correct vendor and press OK. State work. This signifies where the goods and services of this purchase order were performed. If necessary, you may track this here, entering the state two-digit code. PO information. The PO number is usually found on the purchase order itself, and enter the purchase order number here. Expiry date is the date by which the goods ordered by the purchase order should be received. This date may appear on your PO. If the goods haven't been received by this date and the PO is still open, the PO would be considered past due. If there is a specific date in which this PO becomes past due, you may enter that in expiry date. PO type. This is a three digit alphanumeric characters in which can be utilized to track the type of PO. This is a user defined field and may be used if necessary, but is not required. Purchase order amount is the monetary amount in which the purchase order is for. We will enter 1000. Remaining amount will take from the PO amount. This tracks the remaining amount of funds available in the purchase order. On the bottom field here, we are allowed to enter our transaction details. Enter your account number associated with the PO and press tab. Now, we can code to series, location, sets, as well as 1099 code, insurance code, and free field code. We may also change our description if necessary. In order to add another line, simply tab to the next field, enter your account coding, the series, location, and set information, as well as 1099 and free field information will be carried down from the first line to the second distribution line. If you need to change any of these, you may. Since we changed our first line from 1000 to 750, our purchase order knows that there's 250 remaining and has automatically assigned that last $250 to our second transaction line. Once everything is entered into your purchase order entry screen, simply navigate to the top of your screen and hit accept. 